Hello people, in this video, let us look at pressure sore. Pressure sore is also called as a bed sore, pressure ulcer, trophic ulcer, debi, decubitus ulcer, penetrating ulcer, etc. So what exactly is happening here, guys? Understand now, let us say a person is always bedridden, right? Bed sore, that's why you're calling it as bed sore. So what is happening when he's on this bed, right? And he's not moved around for a long time. There is pressure, external pressure, right? So this external pressure is so much that it is more than your capillary occlusion pressure. So it is a very high pressure, like uh, greater than 30 millimeter of mercury. So what happens is external pressure for a long time is there on this uh, capillary. So there is uh, occlusion, isn't it? And there can be ischemia. Because of which ischemia, the tissue here undergoes necrosis. So that is ulcer also. So that is why it is called as pressure ulcer, pressure sore, bed sore, so many other names. So did you understand? Here you can see the pressure sore, right? Pressure gangrene, sore over the heel. So over the bony prominences, prominences, you will find them more. And also these people will not have that much sensation. They might have some neuropathy. That is why they will not be feeling it also. And it will be painless for them. Obviously, right, if there is pain, people will respond to it and fix it. But here they, they are not responding. It's just going on becoming necrosed. So look at the stages of um, pressure sore. Initially, there's just this red, redness like this. And then it goes on to become such a stage 4 where it's so deep, isn't it? So this is a serious and frustrating complication that you will see in the paralyzed, debilitated, comatose patients who are confined to bed or wheelchair. Where will you see this? When you see when the soft tissue is compressed between the bony prominence and a supporting structure which can be a bed or a wheelchair. So uh, can you imagine a bed? You're sleeping on a bed but the pressure is enough to cause a bed sore. It's strange, isn't it? A bed is supposed to be soft, soft. And uh, where will this bony prominence uh, usually, which, which ones are affected? So if a person is sitting, then his ischium, right, on a wheelchair, or if uh, it can be the sacrum, right, it could be the heel, it can be the back of the head, the occiput, it could be the greater trochanter if he's lying uh, on the lateral side, it can be the malleolus lateral, right, all these uh, possibilities are there, okay. So these are the, but uh, the tissue over this bony prominence are affected, ischemia. So that's why they said, you know, people, uh, they say people in wheelchair, they should try to lift themselves up for every, uh, some time, and in bed also they should be turned over. Here they have shown another pressure sore. So the wheelchair people every 10 minutes, at least for 10 seconds, they should lift them off and bedridden people at least 2 hours should turn them, okay, every 2 hours. Now look at this, the factors which predispose to formation of uh, bed sores, like I told you, they are already on this bed or wheelchair for a long time, they are immobile. Also they have neurological causes, like they have peripheral neuritis, they don't feel uh, that pain, peripheral neuropathy, diabetic uh, people, they will, be, they will not feel pain, right, and also healing will be very poor in these people. Right, what else can be the reason? They could, they can be lepra, they can have leprosy, right? They don't feel pain again there. So many other conditions, spinal injury, paraplegia, tabes dorsalis, etc. So also these people can have paralysis, uh, malnutrition, anemia, advanced age, infection. All these are standard things that you will write, isn't it? All these things affect uh, healing. So let's highlight this also. Okay, focus guys. So look at this guys, uh, localized pressure, so then what happens, tissue anoxia, cell death, okay, active inflammation, vasodilation occurs resulting in active hyperemia, so why does it become red, because there is active inflammation there and vasodilation, so first of all it was compressed, now it is trying to dilate, is it, vasodilation, okay. So if you remove the pressure and you allow perfusion, then you will wash out these toxic byproducts and the initial damage may be reversed. But if it is permanent damage, then what can you do? Let's look at it. So clinical features, just look at this. There are four types. They have classified the pressure source, bed source. Are, uh, they have four uh, things here. Look at this. It is easy. Superficial, superficial, deep, deep. Early superficial, late superficial, early, deep, late, deep. Okay. So I think you already saw the photo for this, isn't it? Let's see. Look at this guys, they, uh, here they have shown you superficial, superficial, deep, deep and this one is late, deep, isn't it? This one is just red, it is, it is early, superficial, this is late, deep, okay. So usually this will be painless, that's why they will not tell you anything, isn't it? So in the deep ulceration, which is early, there can be a char at the base of ulcer they are seeing, okay. So in the first one, that is early, superficial, there will only be erythema, some punctate hemorrhage, some edema, moist, irregular ulceration with surrounding erythematous halo, okay. Finally, what will there be in late deep ulceration, chronic inflammation, fibrosis of deep tissue, bursa formation. So, what is the classification, guys? 
early superficial late superficial early deep late deep okay there is no such thing as a small pressure ulcer visible skin will just be tip of the iceberg inside it will be horrible looks like okay so there is a tip of iceberg phenomena iceberg phenomena you had studied in community medicine right now there is a bed sore uh, uh, iceberg phenomena also so only this is what you see so visible skin is merely tip of the iceberg 70% of the ulcer is below the skin wow nice interesting right so let's remember this tip of iceberg where will you see in pressure also okay there is nothing called a small pressure also this is what you see is so small inside it will be very big okay how will you pre prevent pressure also guys we already told you if they are sitting in a wheelchair they should get up every uh, 10 minutes for 10 seconds they should uh, lift themselves up from the uh, wheelchair okay so put a wheelchair this is how wheelchair looks okay and if he's on a bed then what should he do they should uh, change position every two hours all right for how many seconds that they didn't tell them that okay then uh, now let us say uh, what else has the textbook written about prevention you can avoid by medical skin care relief of pressure over bony prominences relief of pressure uh, regularly you should do textbook has given yet another box here for skin care guys so basically what you should do you should uh, do skin inspection over bony prominences you should check any sign for redness irritation abrasion etc right you should take off the pressure keep the skin clean and dry Gentle, you have to massage with lanolin lotion okay then uh, you have to care for the perineum and genitalia especially in people with incontinence the bed sheet that the patient sleeps on should be wrinkle free it should allow air circulation you should not allow accumulation accumulation of perspiration see that is why what happens you see when you see car seats right that uh, the uh, when the people are driving in the car they use a um if this is the car Seat. on this they use kind of a beaded mesh kind of a thing you know people who drive they use a beaded mesh kind of a thing on that they sit because it will have holes right so it will allow air circulation so it will not allow accumulation of pers uh, perspiration you get this so this kind of a beaded thing that uh, car drivers use you can look at that later see something like this wooden beads right so it will uh, give a cool feeling when you are driving in the car so it will not allow perspiration to accumulate it will allow circulation of air right nice right pressure relief um, how will you do you have to change the posture every two hours we told you and uh, lo uh, localize the pressure you should avoid by, by by proper body alignment yes that's the same thing that we are looking at isn't it focus guys fluid filled flotation mattress also that means water mattress is it water bed I have tried air better, it's so uncomfortable. Maybe water bed, interesting. Patient and patient's family you have to educate. Okay, so these are all prevention, guys. Now let's finally go to the treatment. So, treatment, guys, if it is superficial, you just do debridement and allow it to heal by secondary intention. It may take weeks to heal. But if it is deep, what you should do, or if it's a large superficial ulceration, besides debridement, you have to do some dressing, you have to use some de sloughing agents, you have to use antibiotics, you have to give nutrition to that guy, vitamin C, anemia, correct it with iron, etc. Then a correction of spasms and contractures, if there are anything like spasms or contractures, you have to fix those and then you can close the defect. How will you close the defect? There are some closure methods. You have primary closure and split skin graft. Split skin graft means what? You will take epidermis and uh, part of the dermis, isn't it? Part part of the dermis, that is split skin graft. Then you can use flaps. Flaps you have already seen in flap video hopefully. So you will raise a part of the skin and try to cover the other part of the skin, isn't it? So um, transposition flap, rotation flap advancement flap or you can take a free flap and put it wherever you want kind of a thing isn't it so you know how it is then uh, cultured muscle interposition for severe and ischemic pressure source so muscle interposition cultured muscle interposition what is this okay muscle you are putting looks like interposition somewhere in between is it cultured muscle means what so they are using it to cover some fistulas etc let's look at some images not much clarity on that guys but anyways you will use this to fix the pressure sore okay if it is severe um, or ischemic okay then you will educate the patient and the patient attenders to prevent pressure sores okay so what is this primary closure which you saw in the beginning it means you are not using any split screen graft or a flap or a muscle or anything directly you are just uh, um, you will approximate the cut edges right undermine and approximate the cut edges you are not using anything extra here so that is one method of closure other than that you can use split skin graft flap etc flap means you know what it is See, flap means you can see here they have uh, they want to cover this defect. Okay, this is a defect, and they will raise a flap here. They will raise a flap 
here. So this is the flap. They have raised this flap. Okay. So it has its own vascularity, and then they are just turning this flap to cover the area that has uh, the defect. So this is uh, flap. Flap means it will have its own blood supply, right? This is a pediculated flap actually. Free flap will uh, you will kind kind of detach it from the donor. But here the flap is attached to the donor, so this is pediculated, right? So uh, did you understand what are we trying to fix? Pressure sore, bed sore, yeah. But I think this photo is more of a uh, carcinoma or something which they are trying to cover. In this video, we looked at pressure sore, bed sore, the big, what is that? Decubitus ulcer, penetrating ulcer, trophic ulcer, all that we finished. Okay, bye bye.